Anxiety, produced by Aisha Delakia, Caitlin Blackburn, and Brenna Chase. If you're watching this video, you may have encountered a child with anxiety in your practice and may be wondering how to approach and support a patient who suffers from a possible anxiety disorder. Our hope with this video is to help you recognize the high prevalence of anxiety disorders amongst pediatric patients, identify symptoms of anxiety disorders, share tools used to diagnose anxiety disorders, and discuss treatment management including initiation and titration of medication that can be used to treat anxiety in pediatric patients. Our overall goal is to empower you to increase your patient's access to anxiety-related services within your pediatric practice. Definition and Epidemiology Anxiety disorders are the most commonly encountered mental health disorder in the pediatric population, with 25-30% to 30 of children and adolescents developing an anxiety disorder during their lifetime. It is incredibly important that anxiety disorders are recognized early by all pediatricians, as children with untreated anxiety disorders have an increased risk of suicide attempts. Early recognition of the symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment can reduce the impact of anxiety on social and academic functioning and help reduce the chance that the anxiety disorder will persist into adulthood. All children worry and may have fears that are distressing at various times of their life. However, when these worries or fears are persistent and excessive, cause significant distress, or begin to interfere with their everyday functioning or development, this is when they may be diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Per the DSM-5, there are seven types of anxiety disorders that can occur in children, including generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, agoraphobia, specific phobia, separation anxiety disorder, and selective mutism. It is beyond the scope of this video to discuss the nuances of diagnosing each of these disorders, Rather, our hope is that by reviewing symptoms of anxiety disorders, validated screening tools, and the basics of anxiety treatment, you will feel competent in your ability to recognize anxiety disorders and initiate basic, needed, and timely treatment for your patients, be that via referral versus medication administration. Diagnosing Anxiety Disorders as a child's pediatrician, you are often one of the first people to recognize symptoms of anxiety and are in the perfect position to screen, diagnose, and treat children. As discussed before, early diagnosis is important in supporting children with anxiety and preventing progression of symptoms. So, how do you diagnose a child? First, you take a thorough history. Keep in mind that while anxiety disorders often manifest in adults as fearfulness and frequent worrying, anxiety in children may present differently. Irritability, explosiveness, and anger are behaviors to ask about as they can be the predominant display of anxiety in children. Other symptoms to ask about include physical complaints such as a stomach ache or headache, trouble with sleep, refusal to go to school, fears of social situations, leaving home, leaving a caregiver, trouble concentrating, or a decrease in school performance. A thorough evaluation will also include establishing a timeline of these symptoms and asking about their severity. Just like pain can be rated on a numeric scale, so can mood symptoms. For example, you can ask the child to rate their current anxiety symptoms on a scale of 0 to 10. Screening Tools in order to facilitate your history taking and diagnosis, you can use one of several validated screening tools. Keep in mind that parents and children may differ in their report of symptoms for a variety of reasons, including that children may underestimate their symptoms to give a more desirable response, and parents may not fully know about the symptoms their child is experiencing. For this reason, it is sometimes appropriate to give the screening forms to both child and parent depending on this child's age and developmental stage. One instrument is the SCARED screen, known as the Screen for Child Anxiety-Related Emotional Disorders. This comprehensive tool is a child and parent self-report instrument used to screen for several different anxiety disorders. It usually takes about 10 minutes to use and is intended for use in children aged 8 to 18 years. Instructions for scoring the SCARED are straightforward and typically found on the last page of the document. 
A total score of greater than or equal to 25 may indicate the presence of an anxiety disorder, with scores higher than 30 being more specific. High scores on certain groupings of questions may also indicate a specific anxiety disorder. The Pediatric Symptom Checklist, or PSC-17, is another screening tool providers should be familiar with. It is a general mental health screening tool used typically in primary care practices and asks questions about internalizing symptoms, externalizing symptoms, and problems with attention. Though not specific for anxiety disorders, positive internalizing scores are concerning for anxiety and other mood disorders. This screening tool is designed to be used from ages 4 to 15 with adolescents 11 and up completing the YPSC themselves. It is also important to keep in mind that children who suffer from anxiety disorder are at a higher risk for comorbidities, including depression and ADHD, and it is important to screen for these disorders as well. For more information about screening for these other disorders, please reference the other videos in this series. Lastly, you may have heard of the GAD-7, which is another well-researched scale but is only validated for children's age 13 and older. Scores on the GAD of 0 to 4 suggest minimal anxiety, 5 to 9 suggest mild anxiety, 10 to 14 suggest moderate anxiety, and a score greater than 15 suggests severe anxiety. Once your patient has been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, it is important for us as pediatricians to know what steps to take next. Anxiety Management First, educate the patient and their family about your concerns that they are experiencing an anxiety disorder and would benefit from additional support. Second, refer to therapy. Children who are experiencing mild anxiety disorders are best served by psychotherapy. Children who are moderately or severely anxious may best be treated by medication in addition to psychotherapy. At follow-up visits, we should monitor for both a decrease in anxiety symptoms as well as improvements in functional impairment. Most of us watching these videos have not received training in psychotherapy and therefore will not be providing it to patients. However, it is still important for us to understand what our patients are being referred to so that we can best inform and advocate for them. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy One of the best researched therapeutic interventions for children with anxiety is exposure-based cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT. The five components to CBT are as follows. Educating patients and their families about anxiety and what CBT is, including the anxiety triad, which explains the interplay between feelings, thoughts, and behaviors, in addition to explaining to families that avoidance of anxiety-provoking situation or stimuli actually maximizes symptoms rather than the reverse. Skills for managing somatic symptoms, such as relaxation techniques, diaphragmatic breathing, and self-monitoring, cognitive restructuring, for example, challenging negative expectations and changing negative self-talk, exposure methods, from imagining to graded desensitization, and relapse prevention plans, such as planning for booster sessions with the therapist or by coordinating with schools. Unfortunately, in some places that we may practice, CBT may not be readily available. In these cases, we can still utilize some of the guiding principles of CBT to help families manage their child's anxiety disorder including educating the child and family about the illness, helping parents set up systems at home that allow them to monitor for anxious behaviors and set up clear home expectations, rewards, and contingencies, and liaising with schools about how to best support our patients. Research has shown that parents and families play important roles in the development and continuation of anxiety disorders. Therefore, interventions that improve parent-child relationships, strengthen family problem-solving, reduce parental anxiety, and foster parenting skills that help children cope and develop autonomy have been shown to be incredibly helpful and have been integrated into most therapies addressing childhood anxiety. Social workers in our practices can be incredible resources to help families engage in these behavior changes, no matter what subspecialty of pediatrics we will practice in. Short-term medication is sometimes warranted to help support children with anxiety disorders, particularly if their symptoms are moderate or severe, or if they are unable to participate in therapy due to their symptoms, or they have not gotten a full response with therapy alone. Medication Management 
Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, are the most commonly used anxiety medications in children, followed by serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or SNRIs. Tricyclic antidepressants were also used historically, however, are used infrequently today except in rare circumstances by psychiatrists due to possible side effects and potential lethality in overdose. SSRIs are the most commonly used anxiety medications in children and are considered first-line therapy for moderate to severe anxiety disorders. Four SSRIs have been proven to be safe and effective in treating childhood anxiety disorders, but have not gone through the FDA-approved process and are therefore considered off-label. Although the mechanisms of action vary somewhat across SSRIs, the current clinical practice guidelines share that the primary mechanism is similar enough that any SSRI may be used in management of childhood anxiety. The three SSRIs listed on the screen are the most commonly prescribed SSRIs for childhood anxiety management. SNRIs can be considered if patients do not have improvement in their symptoms with SSRIs. For childhood anxiety disorders, only one of the SNRIs, duloxetine, has received FDA approval and can be prescribed on label for children 7 years of age and older with generalized anxiety disorder. The motto, start low and go slow, is a good reminder of how SSRIs and SNRIs should be dosed and titrated for children with anxiety disorder particularly given that families may be extra aware and sensitive to development of even brief transient side effects. Most practitioners initiate treatment with the starting dose seen in this table. If the drug is tolerated, after one week the dose is doubled to achieve the typical therapeutic dose. If there is inadequate response, after an additional three weeks and the drug is still tolerated well, the dose can be substantially increased in a stepwise fashion up to the maximum dose. After initiation of pharmacotherapy, patients should be monitored weekly for the first month, bi-weekly for the next month, and then monthly. It is important to provide families with information regarding side effects in their expected time course. Common side effects of SSRIs include sleep changes, insomnia or fatigue, GI upset, abdominal pain, nausea or diarrhea, and restlessness. During follow-up visits, it is important to assess for symptomatic improvement, side effects, and satisfaction with treatment. Adverse effects typically occur within days to weeks of starting a medication or increasing the dose. Most adverse effects of SSRIs are more severe early on, while their benefits are appreciated later. So it is important to share this information with families at the initiation of medications to help them feel empowered to give the medications a chance to work. It is also important to counsel your patients and their families about the FDA-issued black box warning regarding the risk of increased suicidal ideation when starting SSRIs in children and adolescents. However, it is important to note that there has not been found to be an increased risk of completed suicide with these medications. Nevertheless, when considering the use of SSRIs, the risk of experiencing medication-related suicidal ideation must be considered alongside the risk of suicide associated with untreated anxiety disorders. After the black box warning was issued, the decline in SSRI prescriptions in children was accompanied by a 14% increase in adolescent suicide rates. Furthermore, data from multiple trials suggest a number needed to treat of 3 to 6 for efficacy compared to a number needed to harm of 143. With this data in mind, the consensus among most mental health specialists is that the benefits of SSRIs outweigh the risks. It is also important to screen the child and their family for any history of bipolar disorder, as starting an SSRI in patients with this disorder may precipitate manic states. You may be asking yourself, if I start an SSRI, how do I know when it's all right to stop the medication? The research suggests that once a child has had a significant reduction in anxiety symptoms on an SSRI with stability in these symptoms for one year, it is reasonable to trial time off from the medication, ideally during a relatively stress-free period of time in the child's life. If the child has a relapse of symptoms, the medication should then be restarted. Discontinuation of antidepressant therapy should be performed slowly and with close monitoring. An exception to this rule is fluoxetine. Fluoxetine has a long half-life and can be discontinued abruptly without adverse effects. 
other medications with shorter half-lives should be tapered before discontinuation. A typical taper schedule includes decreasing the dose by 25 to 50% per week. This allows the body to adjust to the lower dose. Abrupt discontinuation of SSRIs can cause withdrawal syndrome, which is characterized by worsening mood, chills, fatigue, nausea, and myalgias. Coping Skills The final part of this video will provide you with examples of skills you can teach your patient in the moment in order to help decrease their anxiety, including breathing exercises and muscle relaxation. First, let's talk about breathing as it's one of the fastest things kids can do to calm themselves. One technique is to start by having your child sit in a comfortable position or lie down on their back. Tell your child to place their hands on their belly and slowly breathe in through their nose, expanding their belly like a balloon to the count of five. Have them pause and then slowly breathe out through their mouth to the count of six. Remind them to exhale longer than you inhale. Repeat this for at least several minutes. Another technique is progressive muscle relaxation, which can also provide immediate relaxation but does not require practice. There are various muscle relaxation scripts on the internet that you can read to your child to guide them through the exercise of slowly tensing and then relaxing each muscle. These two practices can be great starting points to share with families. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. We hope you come away with a better understanding of anxiety disorders your patients face and feel equipped to identify symptoms, share tools to make the diagnosis, and initiate treatment management with families.